Hello crafters, thank you so much for being here with me today. Welcome to another Monday Mix-Up Challenge. So today we're going to be looking at some different ways to add some sparkle and shine to your cards. I was in need of um, some graduation cards because I'm a little late on getting them sent out, but that is what we're going to make tonight. So let's go ahead and change our camera view and take a look at them. All right, so here they are. I've uh, taken uh, some different elements from several different companies that I like and added sparkle and shine to these cards. So I wanted to uh, kind of share that with you and look at some of the different ways to go about doing that. So right off the bat, I did use my glimmer to do the congrats. Um, tonight, I'm not gonna go through all the processes of a glimmer. I will do another video later on that process because um, I just have to set up differently to do that and I, I couldn't see a easy way to to kind of set up my my space here to do both so uh, I did use the the pink fresh um, large brush sentiments and they come with matching dyes but it basically uh, you can uh, glimmer foil these words and then die cut all the words all at once so it's a very fast and efficient way to um, you know use your glimmer and get lots of uh, sentiments out of it so that is where I uh, got the congrats so now that that's out of the way I am using um, the stamp set and die set from uh, Catherine Pooler of the little animals um, uh, looking up into the sky I'm going to be using a galaxy stencil from TCW which I believe stands for the crafting workshop so it's this galaxy I am going to be using some deco foil transfer gel and I'm using the duo um, if it doesn't say duo then it doesn't work the way we're going to be using it tonight it works a little differently so this is the duo way of doing it <laughs> so I'm also going to be using the deco foil transfer sheets in the sparkly silver now these the deco foil does not work with your glimmer this is to use either with deco foil products or um, you may have seen different um, like when you use a laminator or you use um, Heidi Swap's uh, mink machine those you can use this for the glimmer foil is different so we'll be using these and that is the way I uh, got the sparkle and shine on this card and then for this card I'm going to be pulling in some tailored expression background dye and this is twinkle twinkle background I love this starry background it's one of my favorites and for this one I'm going to be using a a wow embossing powder and I took the lid off there so you can see it it is a really sparkly silver and we'll be using uh, the Versamark to, to get some sparkle on there. And then we're also going to bring in some of the paints. Um, this I always forget how to pronounce the name of these. It starts with a T. But these are some really popular paints that are used to do splatter. And we'll be using this one for this background. And then for this background, we're going to use the Doc Martens to splatter. And we can kind of compare and contrast which one of those that we, we like better. Because they do, one is very opaque and the other one is not. So that's, uh, we'll take a look at those. Okay, let's see. Oh, the only other thing I'm going to be pulling in is this Lawn Fawn set. And you may have noticed like on the... Catherine Pooler set you know we don't have a graduation cap but I really wanted mine to be for some graduates so I pulled in this lawn fawn so that I could use this little graduation cap right here and I just fussy cut that I do not have a die set to match these all right the only other thing we're going to be using is some distress oxides and I'm using chipped sapphire villainous potion and blueprint sketch Okay, so let's start by creating our backgrounds. Okay. 
All right, to, I'm also going to be using, this one is um, from Waffle Flower, and it is a media mat, and this is a great way to, um, you know, do your blending and not have a big mess on your countertop. <laughs> so it is one of my favorite ways to do it. And we are going to start with the blueprint sketch. And I'm going to do the top two thirds with the blueprint sketch. And I, I'm not an expert uh, blender. Uh, that's why I almost always do my blending with oxides because they're a little easier. Um, it, it takes a lot more elbow grease to kind of do it with the distress, um, the regular distress inks or other inks. Um, I know Catherine Pooler inks, people do um, blend with them, and I, I have before, but I, I tend to reach for the oxides the most just because they're, they're just faster and a little easier to get to blend. All right, the next color that I'm going to go to is the chipped sapphire. And for the chipped sapphire, I'm just going to go in and around the edges here to add um, just like the darkness is kind of closing in. Kind of further get that night sky. All right, and now I'm just going to come back with my blueprint sketch and kind of go over the edges. And I'm purposely avoiding the center so that I, I still get that little light part there in the center. Now, I didn't add any more blueprint sketch. I just kind of blended over the top and it still had enough on there to uh, get the look I wanted to go for. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is the Villainous Potion. And I'm going to kind of create a purple haze that's coming up from my ground. So I'm going to start at the bottom and just bring that purple up into the sky. All right. There we go. And once more, I'm going to come in with that blueprint sketch and just kind of go over there where they overlap. Now, I don't have a black um, Distress Oxide, so I am going to come in with my Catherine Pooler um, black color, but I'm not 100% sure whether it will come off of my media mat, so I'm going to slide this piece underneath just so I can add my ground without... Um, getting it all over my mat whoops and I do have it now all over my fingers but that's okay there we go so the last step here to creating my background I'm going to use this uh, black just to create my ground here and I'm gonna there we go whoops I'm gonna make a mess yet out of that hold on I did this a dozen times and never had that happen, but of course when it's recording, that's when that happens. <laughs> no problem. There we go. I'm just going to bring that black and my animals are going to sit on here, so it's not as important for that to be super straight. This midnight black is just so juicy. I think I must have overfilled it when I loaded it because, boy, it just oozes everywhere. All right, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of the Villainous Potion there just to kind of blend that in because I really want that purple haze coming up from the ground. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And I'm using the darker one just because I already changed the brush for this one. I don't want to change it back, so... Okay, there we go. We've got our background made, and now time to add our sparkle and shine. All right, I want to show you real quickly just how easy the media mat cleans up. If you don't have one of these, but you like ink blending, I highly recommend picking one up. They, um, like I said, this one came from Waffle Flowers. I believe scrapbook.com has offered a version of some kind. Um, I think Waffle Flower was first, and I tend to like to, to go with the company that kind of first launched something if I can. But there you go, that, that's using our media mat. Now we'll come back and do that again here in a few minutes. But the next thing we're going to do 
is use our deco foil and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for working with the deco foil duo the the transfer gel duo from uh, deco foil all right so I like to put down a piece of just parchment paper this is the same thing you use when you're baking cookies it's just a piece of parchment paper and I like to tape it to my surface and this just makes cleanup way easier like it is so worth it to do this <laughs> so I just tape down my my parchment paper and I put my inked background then I'm gonna get my stencil I'm gonna kind of turn my stencil different ways and see exactly how I want to position my stencil to get the look that I'm going for. I think I'm gonna go maybe about right here. Every time I've done it, I've used a little bit different section of my stencil just to kind of make them look different. And now I'm just gonna tape my stencil to, the, to my parchment paper as well. And I'm just using um, painter's tape. Um, I like to use painter's tape for this kind of thing because it's so cheap. You know, I can get a roll of painter's tape for way cheaper than you can get the, the scrapbooking type tapes. Uh, if something's for crafters, they tend to charge more for it. So I like to use um, the painter's tape just from the hardware store to do things like taping down my mats and stuff like that. Okay. The things you're going to need when you're working with this product, you want to have either a wet towel or a couple baby wipes on hand. And you want to have them out and ready because this stuff dries um, on your stuff pretty quickly. So you want to be able to wipe it off. You're also going to want to have a tub, or like just a shallow, uh, like a cookie sheet or a cake pan of warm water with maybe some Dawn dish soap in it. And I have that back behind me because you're going to want to put your stencil in that water just as soon as you're done using it. Because this, if it hardens on your stencil, then you're your stencil's not going to be very good anymore. Now when I'm using the Deco Transfer Foil, the Duo here, it lasts, one jar will last for a very long time, or at least it does me, unless you use it just every day. So I like to leave this uh, protective lid on there. That helps seal, seal it and keeps it from getting hard inside. So I just kind of lift it back, but I don't want to pull it all the way off. And on my knife, I'm just going to get a scoop. And then I let that close back down and, and put my lid back on. Because you, you want to leave that open to the air just as little as possible. All right. Now, I have this piece of scratch paper here that I'm going to put right here for me to kind of hold on to. And I'm going to start at the top and put down... Now, because I have this parchment paper underneath, I don't really care if I get off the top. I don't want to get off the bottom onto my paper that I'm using, but the parchment paper, I'm going to roll that up and throw it in the trash when I'm done. So it's totally fine if I get off the edges. And that's one of the reasons I like using the parchment paper. So now, if you can, you just want to get kind of a nice, even coating. You know, nothing real globbed anywhere. All right, do you see how that's kind of even in all of the spaces? Nothing's like a real dark or white or anything. I think that looks pretty good. So if there's anything left on my knife, I would scoop it up and just uh, scrape it and put it back in my jar. Close that up. If I have any um, of the goo get on the edges I go ahead and I wipe that off take my knife and wipe that off immediately and go ahead and close this up really tightly all right so I still have one more wipe that I haven't used but this one I'm going to throw it immediately in the trash you don't want to leave this laying around with that goopy stuff on it because if you go to wipe something else off and you transfer that goop once it's uh, it just makes a mess so kind of having that plan ahead of time really helps <laughs> having uh you know your towels and things ready to go 
All right, so now I'm just gonna gently peel this up. Ooh, look at that. And I'm gonna immediately put this in the water back here. All right. So it's very important that we let this dry until it's completely clear. There can't be any white to it. Like right now, it's all white. This has to dry to be completely clear before you try to put your foil on it. Otherwise, it won't stick, it won't work, and it will uh, tear up your paper. So we're gonna set this back behind us, and we're gonna move on to the next. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw away my parchment paper. Parchment paper is cheap, and if I need another one, I'll just get a fresh one rather than risk uh, making a mess with uh, whatever I got off on the edge. All right, and my knife is all clean and ready to be put away. I will put it in that water, actually, to, to clean up later. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to make our embossed background. So I'm going to take my uh, tailored expression piece and if you wanted to, you could take it off of this backing, but tailored expressions, their backings are like really uh, hard. They're like, um, I don't know what they are, but they're really firm plastic. So I just um, do it this way. Like you can just use the plastic as your stamping block. But for this purpose, I am going to do it this way. All right, now I know I want my stars in the top uh, two-thirds of my uh, paper. So I am going to add my, my Versamark on the top two-thirds of this stamp. Now I'm just going to take my paper and gently lay it on here. And I'm going to press it nice and well, especially on that top two-thirds. Alright, and I can kind of hear that, just getting that all pressed down. I've got my snappy tray here ready with my, my WOW embossing powder. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift that up. And we'll see how we did. All right, not bad. I think it did really well. Okay. So I have pulled one of the sentiments out of our stamp set and it's reach for the stars. And on this particular one, I wanted to put that sentiment down here in this bottom corner. So I am going to go ahead and get my Versamark on there and I'm just going to add it right down. Whoops, it might have smeared just a little. Hope not. Alright. And again. Well, ah, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, now if for any reason you do get any places that you want to wipe off, you can just come in with your paintbrush and brush that off. I think those are actually from the stars not sticking. I think that's from the stars. Okay, so once we get at this point, we are ready to heat emboss. And through the magic of video, I have one here for us that is already heat embossed, so you won't have to listen to my machine. I just clean the, ver whoops, I'm shaking my whole table doing that, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to clean the Versamark off of my uh, stamps real quick. And we're going to go on and blend our uh, Reach for the Stars background. I always like to wipe that uh, uh, Versamark off of my stamps right away. It's really just a, a stamp pad with glue on it, so it's not that big of a deal, but I just like to get it off of there. So I'm going to come back whoops, with our media mat again, and we are going to go ahead and ink blend on this one the same way we did the other. There we go. We'll start with the blueprint sketch. 
And I like to, to kind of put it right in the corner of this mat and that makes it so that I can wipe on it. And you might notice that we um, did our embossing on this one before we ink blended. You can do it either way, but I will show you kind of how we'll clean this up and get our stars to shine. Am I using the wrong one? I think I am. That's going to be a little dark because I forgot to, to switch it back. That is okay. Here we go. There we go. I kept doing that. I was like, this doesn't look as bright as it should. But that's okay because I'm going to add that darker color to those edges anyway. Funny story, <laughs> I have probably, oh, 25 or 30 of these handles. And a few years ago when I decided to put the little domes on each of my ink pads, I thought I never need more than three at a time. So anyway, I put them somewhere and I needed a fourth one for this video. I looked all over my scrap room for a fourth thing. I, I cannot find them. I don't know what I did with them. So frustrating. <laughs> so I don't know what I've done. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this black one for now and put this uh, chip sapphire one back on this handle. So I don't know what I've done with my handles. Probably, you know, several years from now when I don't need them, that's when I'll come across them because that, that tends to be how things operate for me, but that's okay. I'll, I'll eventually break down and buy some more and then, then I'll finally find them. Uh, my problem is I'm too organized. And I'm always reorganizing, organizing, and then I put things where I can't find them. And I go back and look where they originally were. So that's just a little side bit. Oh, I'm liking the way that's looking. There we go. Okay, so now let's add our uh, Villainous Potion. I love Villainous Potion. It's such a great color. And I'm just going to... Bring that Villainous Potion up into my sky. The part that really matters is the part that comes up into the, the sky because uh, that other part we're going to make black. So I'm going to put it on this one. Just gonna slide this paper under there again. Oh, I'm putting it on the wrong side. Sometimes it's hard to tell on this one which side's which. Okay. All right. Got it on my straight there. All right. And, sorry, I'm probably shaking. Okay. There we go. All right, so once you've added your um, inks to your embossing, we're gonna want to clean that off. So let's go ahead and wipe off our media mat here. I'm not transferring that ink. And now I'm going to come in with my microfiber towel and we're just going to rub that off. And all of a sudden you're going to see those stars start to shine again. So any of that excess ink on the embossing powder is going to wipe right off. All right, we are ready to do our splatter techniques. I love doing these techniques, but my nature is to not be messy. Some people love to be messy, like that's just their thing. They like to get in there and get messy. I'm like, 
uber fast I have to get it off my fingers so I always have towels and stuff like that ready and having that blue fingernail will drive me crazy until I can get it cleaned up so that's okay though during the process while you're creating but uh, I I will touch something white and transfer that blue that's why I'm so uh, paranoid about getting it off my finger as soon as possible before I touch something and ruin something else all right so for my splatter techniques I'm going to pull out a, a block that I like to use for this kind of thing. And we're just going to be doing this one. Before we do our next one, we have to um, make sure that that's completely dry. So for this one, we are going to use this right here. So I actually don't need the block yet. We're going to use this one right here. So when you're using these paints, you just need to take a little water. Now, it helps if your water bottle is a little more full. So I'm just going to drip a little bit in there. There we go. Okay. And then I'll just take my splatter brush and I'm going to stir that in and get some of that wonderful color up on my brush. Now, I have a box right here that I use as my splatter box. We're just going to put that in there. And I don't want my ground to be covered in splatter. So I am going to take some minty tape and cover my ground so that I don't get splatter there. And then I'm just going to give it some splatter. All right. Now, it's hard to see at this point. But when it dries, and you could take a paper towel and blot it, and that would pull up some of the ink also. But I'm just going to leave it so that I don't lose any of my pearlescence. Because if you do blot it, you do lose a little bit of that uh, white pearlescent look that comes from this particular paint. And I, that's kind of the look I'm going for, so I'm going to keep that. Okay, let's look back behind us here and see if our other one is ready to go so like I said through the magic of video here's one that I did earlier this afternoon and you see how it is completely white so you have to wait quite a while for it to get completely um, or sorry did I say white completely clear see how this one still has a lot of white to it you cannot do the foil when it looks like this it won't work you need it to look like this all right so that's why I did that because I wanted you to see um, the difference there so this one I'll set aside and maybe online I'll post a picture of this one later you'll be able to tell that the part of the the stencil I used was different but uh, this one we'll have to wait till tomorrow probably to ink that all right and I'm going to be using the deco foil transfer sheet here. And this one is called Silver Glitter. I think this one's really pretty to do this technique on. I'm just going to pull out one sheet. I'm not sure how many sheets. Oh, you get 12 sheets in here. So that, that's quite a bit of glittering you can do. And you're going to have it face up like this is the non-shiny side and this is the shiny side you want the shiny side up and we're just going to lay it on there and then you're going to burnish it really well with your fingers and you don't want to be super light you need to burnish that so one thing i like to do is kind of lay another one down on top and then i can really press that in there Without. If you do it this way, you might wrinkle it up. So having another sheet of paper on top kind of gives you area to, to press without wrinkling this up. All right, I think I got everything. So the big reveal, you always hope when you're doing it on video that it works. Let's go from this end. Yep. Looks like we're having some most of it did really well. There's just one little place up here. I got a little tear. Yeah, okay. Overall that's pretty good. 
this can be a tricky product to use but overall that did pretty good now you noticed when i was pulling it up i noticed it was going to tear some of my paper so going from the other direction can sometimes help that all right so i'm pretty happy with that 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 is pretty good now to do the next part of this one I'm going to go ahead and lay it in here and same thing I don't want um, my ground to get splattered so I'm just going to this is a plastic thing in it it's you can wipe it off it's uh, like a wipe erase board that kind of material so I'm just going to put that about yay right there and go ahead and clean off my brush from the other part and I'm going to put just a little bit of my Doc Martens. Right here on maybe just a little bit more. Okay. And Doc Martens is another product that you want to keep sealed up as much as possible because it will dry out. And again, we're going to add some water. Hopefully, yeah, there's my water going. Okay. Whoops, there we go. You want to add some water and then stir in that water, getting your drips. I'm going to hold it pretty high up because I have a feeling I've got quite a bit. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to immediately stick this brush into a paint, the, my soapy water back here. Okay. Because it's done quite a bit. I'm also going to go ahead and wipe off my block. And now I'm also going to wipe this off. You don't want any of that stuff to dry except where you want it to dry. Which is why you want to have your rags and your your baby wipes all ready to go. You don't want to wait until you do the flicking motion, but you see the the difference between the pearlescent and the, the, the white. So that's a very different look that you get. Okay, so one more time, I need to ink a little bit of black onto the base here. I forgot to do that. I think I did this one ahead of time, so that's why that's not done. Okay, and on this one, I don't need very much of the ground because I'm not stamping a sentiment on this one down there. Okay. I need to clean that up. That's really bothering me. All right, now I'm going to come back with just a little bit of my Villainous Potion because I feel like I covered up too much of the... Well, there we go. That'll be enough. Okay. So here are our two backgrounds all ready to go. And... I would have to wait and let these dry completely where I've splattered them in order to trim them down. But on both of my originals, I trimmed a quarter inch off of one side and the top. So on this one, I would probably do this side and the top. I think this one should be good and dry. So since my sentiment is on one side, just going to trim that off so that my card base will have a white outline. And on this one, I think that's good too. We'll go ahead and do it. Like I can feel the stickiness on that um, deco foil, even still. So I didn't take quite as much off of this one, but that's okay. I don't want to lose my design. There we go. So the only thing we have left to do is to add our critters and our uh, congrats words. And I did pop up my congrats words. 
So do you have a glitter or a, a sparkle that you like better? Do you like the embossing or do you like this uh, galaxy stencil and um, foil on there? I think I kind of like the foil. Okay, I'm just going to place this congrats up there in the sky. And same with this one. I've already added the, the foam on the back of these ahead of time. There we go. That one had less little pieces. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, and then for my animals, I, I didn't I didn't pop those up. I wanted the congrats to be like it was coming up out of the sky and my little animals to be watching. So I'm gonna go ahead and got some there we go. And you can really I, I put these animals in the same order that the stamp was in, but uh, of course you wouldn't have to. In fact, you don't even have to use them all. You could use just one. And then my graduate, I made the little bear my graduate. There we go. So tell me, do you have a favorite? I would really love to know. Do you like the sparkly stars or are you a fan of the foil? And I'm going to, I'll glue these on after because I think my video is getting a little long, but I, I hope that you enjoyed um, finding out some of these tips and tricks to adding uh, sparkle and shine and, and foil and glitter to your cards. All right, I'm going to go ahead and change the camera back. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me for this Monday mix-up. We pulled some products from lots of different places to make these fun graduation cards. So uh, do uh, leave your comments, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and I look forward to crafting with you again very soon. I'll be back on Friday with a Heartfelt Friday, and I believe we have a Father's Day card coming up. So, all right, have a great day. Bye-bye.